Maya camera projection done, we're now going to take a look at the project in Maya Stereo 3D. So first we're going to open up our 3D castle. I need to create a stereo camera, so I'm going to go up to the viewport panels menu, drop down to stereo, and then to create stereo camera. The stereo camera comes in, but it's not oriented to the project the way we need it. I need to rotate the stereo camera around and then push it in so that I can orient it the same way as our original projection camera. Since the projection camera was where we lined up all of the textures, that's a good starting place for the stereo camera. I'm going to push in and then press 6 so that I can see the project with the textures loaded. I'm not getting the same field of view as my projection cam because I don't have the same focal length and I also don't have the same aspect ratio. So I need to set both of those. I'm going to open up the render settings and then I'm going to scroll down and look at the device aspect ratio. In this case it's 1.138. Your project may be different. Then I'm going to open up the projection cam in the attribute editor and I see that my focal length is 45 on this. I'm going to make my stereo pair the same focal length. Then I'm going to further refine the position of my stereo pair so that it more closely resembles the position of my projection cam. You'll notice that the camera settings for the stereo pair camera are grayed out. I can't use them when I have that selected. However, if I go up to the stereo camera panel, and choose stereo camera rig, I can then choose stereo camera center and my camera settings are available to me again. And I'm going to turn on resolution gate so I can see around the edges of the composition. And I'm going to move over a little bit more to center the castle. So let's pick our stereo camera again. When you have the stereo camera picked, you can see that you now get a different menu item which is called stereo. And in stereo, you can choose a bunch of different rendering styles. One rendering style is free view. This gives you two images. And if you're able to cross your eyes, you can actually turn this into a 3D image. In this particular case, this isn't working because we have our stereo separation much too wide. The best choice for our purposes is anaglyph, and that's what we're going to be using today. Right away we can see we've got a problem in that our red image, which is our left eye, and our blue image, that's our right eye, are quite far apart and they won't work in this project. We need to zoom out and take a look at our cameras. I'm going to hide the projection and animation cameras so that we can see our stereo camera rig more clearly. First I'm highlighting the stereo camera left, which is your left eye and then the stereo camera right, which is your right eye. If you envision yourself as an actual person in this scene, you can see your eyes are probably 50 feet apart. We need to bring the two cameras closer together, so I'm going to open up the attribute editor. I'm going to scroll down and open up stereo adjustments. And we'll look at the stereo drop-down in the stereo section, and look at the types of stereo 3D that Maya offers. This menu has convergence, off-axis, and parallel. The one we're going to want is off-axis. Next, let's open up the stereo display controls, and I'm going to turn on the zero parallax plane. The zero parallax plane is the point in your project where there is no parallax, that is, it's shifting neither to the left nor the right. We're going to want the zero parallax plane right behind the castle, since it's the center of attention. I'm going to go up to the zero parallax slider, and as I pull it to the left, you can see the plane of zero parallax moves closer to the castle. As I move it to the right, it gets further away from the castle. I want the zero parallax plane right behind the castle, which is, in this composition, my center of attention. Another useful control on this is the safe viewing volume. If you turn it on, you can actually see the entire volume that the camera is taking in. So let's deal now with the distance between the two cameras. So let's go up to the stereo menu and find the interaxial separation. Rather than 6.35 as it is here, I'm going to turn this down to a very small dimension, 0.5. And you can see the cameras jump right on top of each other. Even that seems a little large, I'm going to try 0.25. Then I'm going to go up and select to view the scene through the stereo camera rig. 
And the anaglyph separation on the foreground and background looks a lot more reasonable here. I'm going to move my zero parallax plane back a bit more so that my castle comes forward even more. I'm going to check it again in the perspective view. And I'm going to turn off this safe viewing volume. Now we can clearly see the position of our plane of zero parallax. One rule of thumb in 3D is that your most foreground object should not be closer than 50% of the distance between the plane of zero parallax and the camera. So it looks like this distance is acceptable. Let's check it again from the stereo camera. And this setup looks good. Take note that in this preview, the red is on the right in the foreground, and the red is on the left in the background. So your eyes are crossing over at the plane of zero parallax. As you work, you should be checking the stereo effect you're getting with a pair of red-blue anaglyph glasses. You can either get cheap cardboard ones, or you can get a more professional plastic pair that look like sunglasses. I'm checking the scene now, and it looks reasonably good in this preview. I think I'll move the castle forward a little more by moving back the plane of zero parallax. After some experimentation, I found that 60 looks pretty good. I'm pressing the Render Current Frame button at the top of the interface. And it's going through this rendering process to give us an anaglyph rendering. But this will be a true anaglyph rendering of the scene. And if I center this in my view and use my 3D glasses again, I can see I've really got uh, some very effective depth on this scene. Now we need to render out right and left cameras for this project. Maya will only render out this red-green anaglyph preview for a preview rendering, not for a full rendering. I'm going to choose Stereo Camera, Stereo Pair for my renderable camera. So let's talk about this rendering bug in Maya that may appear in your project. Again, in the render settings, let's double check that in our renderable camera we have chosen stereo camera, stereo pair. When you hit batch render, Maya should set up two folders, one for the left eye and one for the right eye, and then render out each eye separately. However, you may encounter a bug where Maya renders out the same image for each eye. If you find this happening, what you need to do is go up to the top menu, choose Window, and then Settings, Preferences, and Plugin Manager. Inside of Plugin Manager, you need to go down to Stereo Camera dot Bundle and uncheck Loaded. Maya will tell you that plugin is in use and you'll have to force quit it. You'll need to force quit the plugin, and Maya gives you the opportunity to save the file under a different name. Do that. With the file saved under another name, I'm going to return to the Plugin Manager and turn on the Stereo Camera Bundle again, and then hit Refresh. Now I'll go in and open up the version of the project I saved under a different name. Choose Don't Save when Maya offers you the opportunity to save the current project. And now you should find that Maya will properly render out the right and left eye. We're all set. I'm ready to do the render. I'm going to go up here to my render settings again. I'm going to choose frames 1 through 200. I'm going to turn on batch render. And we're ready to go. Sit back. This is going to take a little while. Then we need to bring it into After Effects to set up the anaglyph effect. Okay, the rendering's done. Let's take a look at what we've rendered out. So let's go to our Images folder, and you can see Maya's rendered out one folder called Stereo Cam Left, and that has 200 frames, and one called Stereo Cam Right. And just to make sure the rendering has gone correctly, I'm going to open up the left eye, and then I'm going to open up the right eye, and as I switch back and forth between the two, I can see they're different. So Maya has successfully rendered out a different right and left eye. So let's open After Effects. So inside of After Effects, I'm going to import the stereo camera left. It comes in, and I do want to rename this Stereo Camera Left. And then I'm going to bring in my stereo camera right. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rename this stereo camera 
right. Now I'm going to make a composition out of both the right and left eye. Castle Project left, and this one is Castle Project right. And I'm going to drag these down into another composition, and this is going to be called Anaglyph 3D. Now I'm going to open up Anaglyph 3D, and I'm going to drag Castle Project left so I have both the left and right eye in the Anaglyph 3D project. I'm going to go up to Effect, Channel, and Set Channel. For the right eye, remember this as Right Remove Red. So for the right eye, I'm just going to turn off the red channel. And then for the left eye, I'm going to add a Set Channel also. And I'm going to remove everything but the red channel. So if we turn that off, we can see the left eye is completely red. The right eye is this blue-green. So with the Set Channel effect added to each layer, we're going to select the Castle Project right. We're going to toggle switches. And for our blend mode, we're going to choose Add. And now, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see I've applied the anaglyph effect. And this will all be in this one render. I just need to press Command-M for Make Movie. And I'm going to save it. I'm going to output it to H.264 so that I can view it. I'm going to say OK, OK, and I'm going to render. It's all done. Let's take a look at our 3D Castle movie. Put on your 3D glasses so you can view it with the full anaglyph 3D effect. And yep, that looks pretty good. I'm getting a full 3D stereoscopic effect on my castle project.